So then guys, this is my 30 day review of the iPad Pro M5. Now I've spent a full month living with it. And to be deadly honest with you, there are some changes that I do wanna talk about with this iPad Pro M5 compared to the last generation, but there really isn't too many. Now, I did make a initial unboxing video and my initial thought, you know, that was around about 30 days ago. But since then, I'm going to say this honestly, my feelings haven't really changed that much on this iPad Pro. Because honestly, this does still feel like one of those upgrades that Apple had to release rather than they wanted to. It's because it's been around about 18 months now since we had the M4 iPad Pro. And Apple loves refreshing their top eight products, I like to say, every 12 to 18 months. So this upgrade was kind of a necessity. It needed to be done. And in the form factor of, say, an iPad, it doesn't feel that much different. Now, I know the M5 chip is extremely powerful, and I've even said on, say, the M5 MacBook Pro, you can really feel some big differences with using it. But on this iPad Pro, I'm going to say the experience hasn't really changed that much compared to the M4 iPad Pro. Maybe it's a limitation to do with iPad OS, or maybe the apps that are available for iPad OS compared to what's available to Mac OS, or maybe it's just me how I use an iPad Pro. But the point is, it hasn't really felt any different. But enough of that, let's go over the last 30 days. So just a quick reminder here, on day one, the unboxing was simple. Just the new iPad came out, nothing extra, nothing new. And of course, you know, I didn't even have a charger included inside the box because I've got the UK version. But after 30 days, the design and display feels exactly the same as the launch. This iPad is super thin, still looks premium, and that OLED display, that tandem OLED is one of the best displays out there on any tablet right now. I absolutely love that tandem display. But obviously, we did have that type of OLED on the last generation with the iPad Pro M4. Now, on the inside of this iPad Pro is where everything really does change. Obviously, we do have that M5 chip, and we've also got that new N1 chip. And also, if you go for the cellular version, you get that C1X chip as well to help out here with connectivity. And also, that might help out with battery life. But what I've been using here is the Wi-Fi version of this. So really, I'm gonna say not much has changed, really. I haven't really noticed much to do with battery life or kind of big changes there with connectivity. And we'll get on to battery life a little bit later on but for overall everyday use it is felt as just as fast as the m4 ipad pro for me and talk about the performance for this iPad Pro we have right here. It is still quite a powerful chip we have in it. Now, considering that what I do have here is the likes of the 512 gigabyte storage one, so this does mean I have the bin down nine core CPU inside of this. So this does mean it's made up of six efficiency cores and also what we have inside of this, we have three performance cores. And even the most demanding apps out there, you know, don't come to slowing down at all whatsoever. And, you know, even geek Geekbench 6 scores are still landing at around about 4,145 for single core performance. And I'm getting around about 15,508 for multi-core performance. So basically identical what I saw, say, in the unboxing kind of video what I got. And that does give you around about a 10 to 12% bump up over the M4. But again, it's mostly something that you see on a chart here, not something what you're going to feel in daily use. What I would say is though the most interesting upgrade what is inside of this compared to the M4 iPad Pro is that obviously that 256 gigabyte version, the 512 gigabyte version, we now have 12 gigabytes of RAM. And after 30 days, I have noticed that little bit extra breathing space on this one. This means that I can open up a few more apps and also some heavy pro apps here in iPad OS. They cope just a little bit better there, but it doesn't completely transform the experience in owning an iPad Pro and M5 inside of it. But it definitely helps out. And I want to tell you even more facts and information about the iPad Pro. But first of all, a quick word from today's sponsor. So then guys, if you've been using the new M5 iPad Pro for a few weeks now, like I have, and you're thinking about turning it into more of a laptop replacement, there's two accessories you'll want to check out. First up is the ESR Shift keyboard. This one is fully detachable, so you can type on the keyboard wherever you 
one. And the strong magnetic connection means it locks in place instantly. I'd be mainly using it on my desk, but you can use it wherever you want, all wireless via Bluetooth. You've also got adjustable angles from 20 degrees to 75 degrees in landscape, plus a vertical portrait mode, which is perfect for scrolling or side app work. And that edge to edge trackpad, it's massive, 65% larger than most I've tested with multi-touch gestures that work exactly like a MacBook. And despite all that, it's surprisingly light and also has 360 degree protection, reinforced corners, and the battery just keeps on going. If you don't need the backlight on, it can last up to 160 days. But then there's the ESR Geo Digital Pencil, and it gives you most of Apple Pencil Pro features only for $32.99 US dollars. You've got palm rejection, tilt sensitivity, a fine 1.5 millimeter tip, and even a shortcut button with battery display via Bluetooth. But my favorite bit, it works with the Find My app. Yep, if you misplace it, you just ping it from the app, like here. So this means no more lost styluses down the sofa, for example. And like I said, if you're going all in on the M5 iPad Pro, these two ESR accessories are absolutely no brainers. And with that, I would definitely check them out in the description below this video. So next of all then, what about thermals after month? Well, still they feel like they're identical to the launch week. Now, obviously I've used the thermal camera here several times and the M4 and the M5, you know, iPad Pro is what you can see right here. They heat up in around the same kind of spots and get to really the same sort of temperatures inside of this. And again, for storage inside of this iPad Pro, it's been really, really snappy, but you still get the same options as last time. 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes like I've got right here, one terabyte, two terabyte, and yes, they still run on the current gen as the M4 iPad Pro, you know, storage speed, so they're very, very similar there. But then moving on to battery life. Now this is still quoted up to 10 hours like the M4 iPad Pro. And during the month, I am going to say that it's given me around about that. Obviously, you know, if I push this iPad Pro to do pro kind of apps and performance, then obviously my battery will drain quicker. But compared to the M4 iPad Pro, not much really in it. But one thing I have noticed is that obviously charging is a little bit faster. One of the main reasons behind this is obviously Apple have even claimed themselves that you can now get to 50% in 30 minutes with say a 35 watt charger. And you can just plug it into the USB-C port and you are good to go. And I would say that is a nice to have. Now I wouldn't say that the M4 iPad Pro was slow at charging whatsoever, but you can notice a bit of a difference there. But I wouldn't be say upgrade from the M4 iPad Pro to the M5 just for that reason. And really that leads me onto the full on conclusion here. After 30 days, my overall feeling hasn't really changed. The M5 iPad Pro is basically the M4 with a slightly newer powerful engine in it. It's still ridiculously fast, still premium and still overpowered for 99% of people out there. That's what I'm gonna say. But nothing about the past month has made me feel a at all that I'm handling a brand new iPad Pro. Whenever I've gone to pick it up, I've not gone wow by it whatsoever. I felt like I'm still picking up, say, my last generation M4 iPad Pro. And like I said, I think that's slightly the problem with it. That, you know, the M4 iPad Pro was so good. And obviously the iPad OS in what I'm gonna say is probably the bit of the problem here is, you know, it's limited by how much you can do on it that you don't get that full potential of all that power unless you use some specific apps for the M5 iPad Pro or even the M4 iPad Pro out there. But still, I do really love it. But personally, what I would be saying is if you still can find M4 iPad Pro out there at a discount, and obviously, you know, that's a good few hundred dollars less than the iPad Pro M5, I would buy that while stocks last. But then after that, you know, if you do want to get the newest one, you want to get a full on warranty and things like this. And when those M4 iPad Pros, you know, they, you know, the warranties are gone now, you can't buy them brand new anymore. Then obviously do get yourself an M5 iPad Pro because it is going to be the best tablet out there. 
But really guys, that is all I've got to say about the new iPad Pro M5. Personally, I don't think I'm gonna be probably making too many more videos about it because the experience, like I said, is so similar to the last generation and what has changed on it is so limited too. But what are your thoughts on the M5 iPad Pro? Would you get yourself one or would you maybe get yourself a different iPad? Well, let me know in the comments below. And on that note as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it please do press the like button and as always if you want to hear the latest apple news reviews and comparisons make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell until next time guys i'll see you really soon take care bye bye